Today is Thursday, July the 9th. Boy, it's hard to believe that we're over a week into the month of July. I, I have this funny feeling that all of a sudden we're going to blink and summer is going to be over. And, and to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how I, how I feel about that. I'm enjoying this summer. I'm enjoying this heat wave that we're in the midst of. I'm not exactly sure how that's affecting you as residents of the Blue Water Rest Home. But boy, these are, these are warm days. And, uh, but I'll take it. When you think about uh, the months of, of the winter when we're, we got snow drifts and icicles all around and we, we shiver and we long for the days of warmth and we long for the, the brightness of, of, of color outside our, our windows and, and here we are. So I'm, I'm just fine with this heat. It keeps life interesting. It's, it's good. Uh, yeah, I have a lot, of, a lot of thanks to God for this weather that we find ourselves in. This morning I'm going to be addressing the question of uh, how can we be sure that we are saved? How can we have assurance of our faith? How can I know that someday when God, um, when my life on this earth is finished, how can I be sure that I will be in the presence of God, that I will go to heaven, that I will go to be in the new heavens and the new earth rather than facing the judgment of distance from God and eternal death? And, and that's, a, that's a huge question. That's a really important question. And I've been learning I would say in the last number of months, I've been learning more and more that this is an important question that people face or, or a, que a question that comes up in fresh and new ways for folks in the latter years, the latter even months of, of their life. And, and, and so this is, this is huge. This is huge stuff. This is the fundamental question uh, of life. This gets into the core pieces of faith, reality what we know, what we believe. And, and you know, it's something I, I think that Jesus cared deeply about, that people would know that through faith in his life, his death and resurrection, that people would know that they can be sure of their future destiny, that they can be sure of their coming life with Christ. And, and he spoke to this a number of times. The first passage that I have here is John chapter 5, verse 24. John 5, 24. I got my Bible here. Uh, I guess you probably can't see it on the, on the camera here. I'll, yep, there we go. <laughs> the Word of God. Looking at what God has said to us. John 5, 24. And it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but is crossed over from death to life. And so if you're wondering about this question, will I pass over from death to to life? Will I live forever? Will I be with God? Will I have every tear wiped away? Will I have no more mourning or sickness or pain? Or will I find myself in the place of the second death, death forever? Uh, yeah, big question. And Jesus says here, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me. So just straight up, have you believed in God the Father? Have you believed in the message of the gospel? Have you said, yes, like I, I, I place my faith in this. I decide to be, um, to put myself uh, in God's family. I decide to trust that Jesus' death at the cross forgave me for all my sins, wiped all that away. And, and if your answer to that is yes, then you can be certain God has promised it that you will live forever. That is a promise. And God is faithful. He tells us that he will not go back on his promises. John 10, 29. Let's turn there for, for a moment. Another verse that speaks to this. John 10, 29. And it says... My Father who has given to me is greater than all. Sorry, my Father who has given them, the people, to me is greater than all. And no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. So you can trust that God has promised you when you place your faith in the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus. That God has promised you that you will be with him forever. And Jesus says here, nothing can snatch people out of the Father's hand. If God is the King of all things, if he's completely in control, if he's good, loving, and all-powerful, then nothing, nothing terrible could happen. There's nothing that you could do that would remove you, that God would say, all right, I'm, I'm done with him. There's nothing. The evil one cannot trick you out of the hand of the Father. When you place your faith in Jesus, you are a child of his forever. This is just marvelous, marvelous news. Let's take a look at Jude. So these aren't the words of Jesus. Uh, this is one of the writer's of a letter in the New Testament. We're going to look at Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Jude, that's a, a tiny little book right, uh, 
right before the, the book of Revelation. So Jude, and he writes, Jude one twenty four. He writes, and this is the words of praise and worship. He says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. And so he's honoring and worshiping God here and declaring that God is the one who can keep you from stumbling. When you place your faith in Jesus, he will preserve you. He will hold on to you. He will carry you until the time of completion when you enter into the great inheritance of life with God. He can keep you from stumbling. He will present you before his glorious presence. Jesus is going to present you before the Father one day at the time of judgment with glory and great joy. Think of that. God is going to find so much. Jesus is going to find so much joy. He's going to be grinning from ear to ear. Think of that great joy when he presents you before the Father and says, this is, this is one whom I have saved. This is one whom my blood has covered so that they could be forgiven for their sins. I've paid the penalty. I've atoned for their sins. I've set them free. Ah, this is, with great joy, he's going to present you before the Father. He's able to keep you from stumbling. Nothing can get in your way and trip you up when you place your faith in Jesus. Romans chapter 8. So we're going to swing back now to the words of Paul in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. Romans 8, 38 to 39. And Paul writes, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Another promise. Nothing can separate you from God. Not the most uh, spiritual beings, angels, demons, death. Nothing that's too big. It talks about height or death. There is nothing at all that Paul could conceive of that has the potential to separate you from the love of God. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you worry about. It doesn't matter. God is bigger than all of that, and he is going to carry you into eternity. And so I share these verses with you. I hope that they're an encouragement today. I hope they're an encouragement And I think for all of us that uh, when we, you know, in, in our quiet moments when we're, when we're maybe lying in bed and staring at the ceiling and wondering about the big questions of life and, and Satan wants nothing more, he wants desperately to trip us up and to cause us to turn our back on Jesus. He wants to discourage us. He wants us to feel grief, even terror. And so he will try to convince us that we're in a troubled state. But it's in these moments that we hold on to these promises and we say, no, no, I am a child of God. I have placed my faith in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. He saved me from sin. He's given me eternal life. And so maybe even John 5, 24 would be a really good verse to memorize. The one who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Maybe that'd be a good verse to memorize. And when, when, the, when the deceiver is tormenting you or when you feel those, those questions of, of doubt or fear and, and just say, nope, I'm going to declare this promise because it is true. We have such a good future ahead of us. I look forward to that. I, ca I can't even begin to fathom what that's going to be like someday. What that's going to be like when we find ourselves in the presence of God. So I, I hope this is encouraging to you today. Such good news, eh? Such good news. All right, let's take a few moments and uh, pray together now. Lord God, these promises that we have here in Scripture are, are a gift to us. We are not left alone to wonder and to worry and to fear. We're not left alone in our fear and our discouragement. But here we are. We have words from you that give us courage, that give us confidence. And so we trust God. We trust that you will carry us from death into life. We trust that you can keep us from stumbling, from falling away. You will preserve us. So I pray for each resident, each staff member, anybody who watches this video, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would encourage each one, that you would speak these words of a promise over us and that they, they wouldn't just be words that we hear and nod our heads and be like, oh yeah, okay. 
and then they fall away. But these would be words that would seep deep into our hearts. Holy Spirit, do a work so that we would have that assurance. Paul said, I know whom I have believed and that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him until that day. These are, these are great promises, God, that we can declare that with him. Thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for the gifts from your hand that we'll enjoy today, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a warm smile from a staff member or a resident, whether it's the food or the flowers on a windowsill. All of these things are good gifts from you. And we give you thanks that we're not alone. We give you thanks that you're carrying us through this time. Give us strength. Help us to hear your voice. And most of all, God, thank you that we can be forgiven, that we don't have to walk in guilt and shame. Uh, so we love you, God. Guide our steps today. And we pray all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll be back with you for a devotional video next Thursday. Pastor Dennis is on holidays right now. He's taking a bit of time off. He's been, been working really hard, caring for everyone. Uh, what a gift he is. Uh, I know to our church community and, and, and to, to a number of you at the Blue Water Rest Home. And, and uh, boy, God is just at work through Dennis in many ways. And so he's taken a breather for, I believe it's about three weeks, uh, well-deserved rest. And so he won't be with us for devotional videos on Tuesdays. But uh, you still got me on, on Thursdays. And then I'll be taking some vacation later in August as well. So may God be with you. Again, I, I think I, maybe I say this each time or most times. But I am, I am really looking forward to being with you again when we can do uh, chapel at the Blue Water Rest Home in person. I have no idea. No idea. You have no idea when that's going to be. But we trust that God is carrying us and, and we look forward to that day when we will have that opportunity again. Okay, press on. You can be sure that when you've placed your faith in Jesus, when you've made that decision to say Jesus is my Savior and King, that he will hold you, hold fast to you. He will carry you into eternal life. A lot of good things to come. All right, we'll talk to you later.